So you've found yourself faced with a question, WordPress or Webflow? It's a pretty loaded question and there are a ton of different factors that go into your decision of what platform you're gonna build your website on. WordPress and Webflow are used to make the same thing websites, but they're really different. The biggest difference being that WordPress is a standalone, open source, free content management system. Webflow, on the other hand, is a hosting service, a visual website builder, and a content management system all in one that you pay a monthly or annual fee for. My name's Casey and I'm a freelance web designer and developer and I've used both WordPress and Webflow to make some really great sites for clients. If you're watching this video, you might be trying to decide between the two and there are a ton of different differences. However, in this video, I'm gonna cover kind of the things I see to be the main differences between the two. Hosting. If you build a site on WordPress, you'll need to sign up for a monthly hosting service to host that site. Some of the most popular ones are Bluehost and GoDaddy. However, if you are wanting a hosting provider with a little more added security and support, you might choose a WordPress specific hosting provider. When I built a lot of WordPress sites, I used WP Engine. Um, Flywheel is one I've also used a lot, and those are really great if you want a little extra security, backup support, and things like that. With Webflow, you don't need to worry about hosting because when you pay for Webflow, you are also paying for hosting. So everything is included within Webflow. Number two, content management system. I've said this a few times, what does it mean? Well, it means exactly what it sounds like. It is the system you use to host all of the content on your site and manage all of that content. So that means everything from pages, blog posts, team members, different pages, things like that. When you start a WordPress site, it comes with a lot of things already set up at the get-go. Um, WordPress was originally used as a blogging platform, so when you load up a WordPress site, it automatically has a blog post type. It comes built in with fields for blog post names, categories, tags, the body, things like that. However, if you wanna add in additional post types, like say you want to have a collection just for editing team members or just for editing your business's locations, you'll need to add in a separate plugin to create those custom post types and those custom fields. When you use Webflow, you're starting with a blank slate. Nothing is preloaded, but if you want to add a new post type or collection as it's called in the Webflow space, you can select from some sample ones and even add in some sample content so you can actively design what those posts are gonna look like without having the concrete posts in there, if that makes sense. To use the Webflow CMS, you use the Webflow CMS plan which is a step up from their basic plan, but it is totally worth it in my opinion. This feature is built into the Webflow CMS plan and it makes it really easy for people to add new post types. Um, and it was one of the main reasons I started using Webflow in the first place. Number three, design, templates, theme. A theme in the WordPress world is what your site looks like. So there are a ton of different WordPress themes to choose from. You can buy one if you want something really specific. You can get a free one. One really popular thing now within WordPress are visual drag and drop builders like Elementor or Divi. I used Elementor a ton um, and still use it today when making WordPress sites. And that's just one way to make sites a little bit more custom in WordPress, but Elementor and Divi have free versions and paid versions if you want a little bit more. Um, so I was paying for Elementor when I was using that service a lot more. If you're a good coder, you got a good coding brain, you can also of course custom code all of the front end of a WordPress site too. When you first set up a Webflow site, you have the option to choose from some of their pre-built templates, but the beauty of Webflow is that you have the option to start from a blank canvas and using their visual editor can basically create anything you want. This editor view, which is called the designer view in Webflow, makes it so easy to make exactly what you want and translate designs directly from Figma or XD or whatever you use directly into Webflow. It also makes it really easy to add things like interactions, which really bring a page to life. Number four, uh, site speed. Very important thing for websites. If it's slow, I don't really wanna see it. With WordPress, site speed really depends on the theme you use and what plugins 
and also how many plugins you're using. As soon as you start building a WordPress site, you're pretty quickly gonna be adding plugins onto the site. And when you're adding those in, it's really important to keep in mind the amount of weight those plugins are going to put onto your site. And weight, in my mind, is what I'm calling it, is all that code that may slow a site down. I say may because some plugins are really efficient and aren't gonna hurt your site speed, some may. And when I was using WordPress, it was kind of hard for me to tell which ones were, which ones weren't, unless I did like a really deep site audit to figure out the difference between the two. Themes also contribute to site speed as well. So when you're doing a WordPress site, you kind of have to figure out, you know, what theme am I gonna use? What plugins am I gonna use? And how much are those going to feed into my site speed? I should also say that there are plugins that can speed up your site. Uh, good ones usually cost more. There's just, whenever you get into the WordPress space, there's just a lot of different plugins that you have to juggle to figure out how they work with each other. Webflow, it's, a lot faster, and I'll tell you why. When you are using other drag and drop editors and you're putting a little content block onto a page, there are and can be a lot of different things in that code that you don't want to be there and aren't going to use as part of that little block. With Webflow, if you drag a div onto the page, it's just a div, and there really isn't anything else until you add that styling and it makes it really clean to use. And it makes the code a lot leaner, it's really clean and efficient and that's why a lot of developers really love Webflow for this reason. And don't get me wrong, you can make a Webflow site slow. You can add a lot of things to make it slow. But as somebody who has developed in both WordPress and Webflow, this difference is kind of night and day for me between the two. When I was using drag and drop builders in WordPress, my sites were a lot slow. I had to do a lot of work to figure out what was slowing them down. With Webflow, things are fast and they just work. And if something's slow, it's probably my fault. So yeah, clean code does matter in a site and Webflow just does this really well. Five, plugins and integrations, WordPress. If you are building a site in WordPress, as I said before, you're probably gonna need plugins. Plugins are third-party things that you add onto the site that make the site do things that you couldn't do natively. I hope that makes sense. Lots of WordPress plugins are free, which is awesome. Some things you'll need plugins for are SEO, a drag and drop builder like Elementor, custom post types, um, even some things like duplicating a page I found needed a plugin. Okay, those are some of the smaller functionalities. If you're building a more robust WordPress site, you might need some beefier plugins like um, WooCommerce is for SEO. LearnDash is one I used for building a learning management platform. And there's lots you can do there, lots of different offerings because WordPress is such a big platform. There are lots of plugins for whatever you need. Just keep in mind with WordPress plugins, you or somebody on your team will need to actively manage and update those plugins, make backups before you update the plugins and then update the plugins to make sure nothing went wrong. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are using WordPress, whatever plugins you use, they will need to be updated. Whatever you feel like is missing from Webflow, there is probably a no code tool that you can use to add that functionality to your site. If that thing you need is memberships, Memberstack is a great solution for adding memberships to a Webflow site. Besides Memberstack, there are lots of other plugins and integrations you can add on to Webflow as well to get that little specific something you need. Number six is SEO. With WordPress, you have a bunch of plugins you can choose from. You're probably gonna end up downloading Yoast or uh, Rank Math. Those are two plugins that people tend to use to add in SEO functionality and edit all that good stuff within WordPress. With Webflow, those tools are already included. Don't even worry about it. You can edit it within Webflow. Number seven, security. WordPress is a really popular platform, which unfortunately also means it's a little more vulnerable to security threats. However, 
As I've said before, there's lots of different plugins you can use to make it a little stronger, make it a little beefier. Um, you can also choose a hosting that is a little bit more secure and will make your site a little bit more secure. With Webflow, you've already got security built in when you sign up for the platform. So that includes things like anti-spam filters, password protection, malware scanning, and also everything is encrypted. So really good stuff. Number eight, support WordPress. As I said before, really popular platform, which means a lot of people have a lot of questions about it. And because it's been around so long, a lot of those questions you can just Google, which is awesome. If you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one support, that is probably gonna come from your hosting provider, your theme developer, the plugins you're using. So that can vary depending on whoever is in charge of that theme, hosting, or platform. Um, and also how often, especially with plugins, they're being updated and if they are still being updated. Webflow also has a super active community and I've found that Webflow people are super excited about the platform and really eager to help if you ever have any questions. Pricing. Uh, this is a sore spot for a lot of people between the two platforms. WordPress is completely free and open source. However, you do have to pay for hosting. You can buy that hosting pretty cheap. You can buy that hosting pretty expensively. You also have to pay for any paid plugins you use. With Webflow, you choose from a site plan and you pay a flat monthly fee. The most common plan, which is the CMS plan, is I think $16 a month annually and $20 a month monthly. Now, I'm just gonna speak from personal experience here. When I was using WordPress, I wanted a really good hosting provider just so I didn't have to worry about backups and I didn't have to worry about themes and support like that. Um, so I paid about $30 a month for hosting. I also used a paid website builder, which cost me an annual fee. I also paid for a really good custom post type plugin. So all of that, ended up being a lot more monthly than I'm currently paying for Webflow that includes all of those things. So I will say that Webflow can be cheaper. However, you can just get WordPress and pay for really cheap hosting and have a cheaper site on WordPress. So yeah. Number 10, this is the last one because I don't have any more hands. Ease of use. Like anything, uh, it's gonna be as complicated as you make it, but I'll kind of give you the two sides here. With WordPress, it can be a lot simpler because the site is already built in there. It already has, you know, blog posts built in. You can just choose a theme and then edit the content in the editor, then you're good to go. However, I feel like with WordPress, you do need plugins to make it good. All of that complexity to me makes it a little bit harder to use, but it can be a lot easier to learn right off the bat. With Webflow, I will say there is a steeper learning curve. However, there is a whole educational platform. There are a ton of videos. There are a ton of tutorials built by Webflow. And once you learn it, everything's native to the platform. So you're doing everything in there. It's a lot more intuitive in my opinion once you get started with it. So ease of use is definitely gonna be, I think, a subjective thing depending on who you are and what your style is. But for me, Webflow is easier. That might be controversial, but whatever. So what should you do? It depends on your specific situation. So only you can make that decision, but I'll give you my opinion anyway. I think Webflow makes a lot more sense for most situations, and I'll tell you why. At the end of the day, when I was using WordPress, there were so many different parts to keep track of for me. Hosting, SEO, the drag and drop builder, all these different plugins, all how all these plugins work together, site speed. And it was just getting really, really complicated for me to manage and for my clients to understand. Also, a lot of the time, stuff just wouldn't work. And I had to figure out why it wouldn't work. Oftentimes it was because of plugins not working together very well, or somebody had downloaded a plugin a long time ago that I had to dig in and figure out. I will not tell you how many sites I dropped in on in WordPress and there were like 30 plugins and uh, like half of them were being used. <laughs> I have spent so much less time troubleshooting issues in Webflow because it just works. It's just so nice and clean and the community's so good and it's actually like fun to use and fun to learn, which is so huge. 
So yeah, that's my opinion. Um, after spending a lot of time in both platforms, I like Webflow a lot more. I still do make WordPress sites for clients that request it, but I am definitely pushing Webflow a lot more these days just because it's a good time. And with both of these platforms, you can just kind of try it out and see what's right for you. Webflow has a free plan. WordPress is also free, so you can kind of try out what you think is gonna work for you. If you do need a membership website, definitely check out Memberstack and Webflow as a pair. Um, there's lots of really great examples of membership sites built in Webflow, and they are great. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope this makes your decision a little clearer, a little easier. Uh, I obviously have a preference, but I, I hope it was helpful either way. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.